um, our topics are all related, yeah. mo mostly at least. <laughs> and uh, generally it is uh, about a scalability solution, uh, which is uh, probably the most uh, interesting and uh, uh, epic step uh, of, of the blockchain tech in general. So that's uh, a very uh, fundamental problem that a lot of people are uh, trying to solve and there are multiple different solutions. So, you need to start it with the most technical topic. <laughs> and I hope that our viewers, <laughs> our viewers stick around while we talk about scalability and uh, and uh, sharding and all this stuff, and then stay stay for the for the for the fun things like uh, NFTs and El Salvador and uh, and uh, whatever else. But <laughs> yes, let's start. Let's start. We're ready. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well. Uh... Uh, if you want me to start, then I, I just wanted to mention that I came across uh, some some uh, article uh, that is related to uh, Arbitrum, uh, that that is a project uh, on Ethereum scaling solution for Ethereum, promise, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, and it is a level two scaling solution, and what it means is that uh, uh, it involves uh, uh, some some branching or some uh, a parallel shell chain uh, running along with uh, ethereum and the the main purpose of uh, that is to uh, offload some transactions from the main net and not uh, uh, pr provide uh, the whole transaction history, but uh, instead provide a, um, a snapshot, so to say, uh, of, of uh, transaction history that uh, is committed and represent uh, a, a part of the history that yep. took, uh, took place in. Uh, I uh, in the, uh, so, yeah. sorry. I, I propose to start with a simple explanation possible because for some viewers they might might hear the word scalability they might have, might have heard this before but they're like what the hell like why, why is this going on and if we if we uh, explain it to to, uh, to someone who doesn't know i think that's going to be useful for them to to know and then read other articles and then they will understand as a result what we are what we are talking about why scalability why why everything revolves around scalability why is it such an important topic right and uh, so I will try before we go into Arbitrum and all those solutions, I will try to explain and you can chime in and also add something and interrupt me if, uh, if something needs additional explanation. Uh, but basically, so, so blockchains, uh, so it started with Bitcoin, right? It's the first solution that solved this uh, problem, which I'm not going to go into um, about. Um, so, so it's basically decentralized money. For the first time, there is no central entity that keeps the ledger of all the people like a bank, right? OK, this guy sent to, to, to this one and this one sent money to this one. And as a result, the balance is this, right? So before it was in one database somewhere on someone's computer and it could be hacked and it could be censored and the, the bank and they still do this. They might say, oh, sorry. Oh, this is your money. No, this is our money now. Right. And you don't have any access to your account. PayPal blocks sometimes thousands of dollars worth of transactions for people and they are crying on uh, on social media, but nobody can nobody can help them. Right. And then came Bitcoin and it like it doesn't matter. So so that's the, the power of the system. Yeah. Criminals use it. But but again, it highlights this power of the system that even if you're a criminal, this money cannot be taken away from you and why it's good, uh, because if you're not a criminal, but governments or, you know, even someone that runs the bank or exchange or whatever, they want to take this from you, they are not able to do so if everything is decentralized. But uh, what are the price that we have to pay for that? And the price is, for example, that at first, everyone who is participating in the, in the blockchain, in the Bitcoin network, let's say, everyone has to store all the transactions forever all the transactions that are on the system right and now this blockchain starts growing and so this is the storage scalability problem and now like bitcoin blockchain is about 300 gigabytes right and then ethereum full ethereum history is like around one terabyte and they do some pruning of that but uh, it's still it's still a lot right if you want to participate fully and uh, validate all the transactions that, uh, that are going on uh, and then there's another problem is that 
uh, it's 300, but it's like, it sounds a lot, right? 300 gigabytes, but it's still good because if it was more, like if it, like it would, it would be more. Imagine if, uh, so, so now it depends on the block size, right? The blockchain, it consists of blocks that refer to, to the previous one. And then a block has usually a block size limit, right? And for blo for Bitcoin, famously, it's one megabyte, and a lot of a lot of uh, wars were fought over that. And Bitcoin Cash had to fork to another chain, create a clone of Bitcoin with all the transaction history, but they removed the the, the one megabyte limit that Satoshi put into place because now the system cannot, like it's 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 very uh, it's very small. Uh, the, the blocks are very small. And so, uh, how do, so now, okay, the scalability, how, how does this happen? Imagine if the blocks were like one terabyte, you could put anything, there is no limit, right? Maybe the blockchains would have been now 50 terabytes, 100 terabytes, it would have been terribly centralized because like you don't have 10 terabytes lying around. Three, 300 gigabytes you also don't have, right? But that's another story, we can talk about that. But the, the main idea is that there is a limit in place so that the system is not abused. And then there is another limit, which is monetarily limit, is when you have a small block, that's a, let's say one, one megabyte. Uh, well, what do you do when you have a one megabyte size of, of the next block, and then you have five megabyte worth of transactions? Well, they compete for each other. They cannot all fit into this block, and so they all compete which one is going to go there uh, and be in the next block. And they compete by offering more fees to their miners. And then miners say, okay, so I take the most interesting transaction, the, the, the transactions that pay most money for me, and then I include only them into the block. And so there is this competition. So in Bitcoin, that's um, a fee uh, that you pay. In Ethereum, it's the gas that you pay for the, for the uh, execution of the transactions and contracts. Um, and this is the, the issues that we have now, basically. So whenever, so Ethereum block is small, Bitcoin block is small compared to the demand. And so what happens is that people are competing for those transactions. And when something very important happens, let's say some, some event where tokens are being sold or famously CryptoKitties, the, the, the first, uh, uh, the, 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 the blockchain project that first uh, brought disruption to the Ethereum blockchain, a major disruption in a big way when they launched the project and then people, because, because it's monetary and they're like, okay, maybe we'll pay $10 for transaction. Maybe we'll pay $50 for transaction. They're like, wow, right now people are paying $100. I will pay 100 and one. And, and, and so then it happened that we have this problem. We have this problem that blockchains need to scale, but they cannot because of those limits. But if you remove those limits, it's even worse because now everyone will just put their transactions in and then where do you store it, right? And so we will talk a lot about that, but that's the central issue of that. And now, so so what we dis discussed now was layer one, what's called the main layer, the base layer of the system, the truth. And then some people try to build additional projects on top of that layer one, and they might be different, and they call it layer two, which is not like real layers because they're just like side projects and there might be t many layer two uh, solutions. But basically what they say is, okay, let me, let us take some hit from the main blockchain, from the, from the main, uh, from the main chain that we have here from the layer one, and let's put all the, all the transactions and all the things into this uh, second layer. So it's, for example, on Ethereum, it's Raiden network. Uh, it's uh, it's um, uh, it's Matic, which is now Polygon, right? So it's different different projects which still uh, allow you to put some of the th some of the stuff there into another blockchain. And the good things about them is that the way they are being designed, mostly that they the goal is to provide the same security guarantees, right? So we don't want, of course, we can do a second layer completely centralized, but then it's going to be a problem because it's completely centralized. And so uh, uh, th this second layers, they, uh, they are designed to be to provide the same security guarantees and allow a lot of scaling so that the fees are down and then we can use, uh, we can just calmly use the, uh, the, 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 the solutions there. So that's the layer two that we've been talking about, uh, Raiden and Polygon, and now uh, Denise will talk about um, Arbitrum, right? Which is the roll-up uh, scaling solution on the Ethereum 2.0, right? Uh, and then on Bitcoin, that's Lightning Network, uh, etc. So that's that's the big overview. Did I miss anything? Do you, uh, maybe something that you need to add? Uh, well, I wanted to add that there is uh, one one uh, crucial effect of, of uh... Scaling 
uh, of scalability of, of a good uh, scalability solution is that there will be possible to uh, increase the number of transactions that will that, that could be could fit in one second, right? For example, okay. uh, Ethereum point two two point oh uh, mentions uh, thousand or maybe five several thousands of transactions per second, which is uh, actually uh, crucial for mass the mass adoption of, of the whole blockchain system because it really a, a big step uh, in this uh, in this technology yeah and uh, yeah there are different uh, different uh, layer two uh, related solutions uh, there, there are state channels or, or payment channels uh, and also and this is, this the, is related uh, to the the lighting network right which is using those state channels and sometimes several of yeah. them to chain them together yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, also there are some side chain uh, some side chain solutions like plasma or uh, something like that uh, uh, and um, uh, so uh, there is one one uh, thing that uh, could increase uh, security of, of using uh, another blockchain is that uh, these uh, uh, transactions that are made aside of the main uh, um, net uh, should also be uh, fully EVM compatible. And that's uh, what Arbitrum, EVM is. Uh, uh, so for, for, for uninitiated audience, we have to explain <laughs> Lots of stuff. EVM is yeah. Ethereum virtual machine, and so it's 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 the thing that uh, runs the contracts, right? So whenever you have a contract and you write it in Solidity, Solidity is one of the languages that you can write your smart contracts in. There's another one called Viper and some other contracts, and all of them compile to a uh, to to a compiled code, which is a bytecode EVM bytecode, right? And EVM is this Ethereum virtual machine, this virtual processor that takes in instructions and then uh, and then executes them and it executes exactly in the same way on all computers and so Denise is saying that all those layer 2 solutions of course they should they should support the same uh, functionality to be able to run smart contracts right otherwise they cannot they cannot do the same thing that we have in DeFi and NFT and whatever yeah yeah, and uh, this uh, approach allows to uh, verify the, the chunk of transactions that were made outside of the mainnet uh, to uh, to verify uh, the uh, correctness uh, when uh, uh, at the moment of uh, committing those transactions as a s squashed into a single transaction on mainnet. So that's that's how it works, and it uh, really um, well. Uh, I've been digging this topic, uh, and uh, as far as I uh, understood, Ethereum uh, 2.0 uh, tries to uh, adopt multiple approaches to the scalability. Yes. So it uh, it is going to uh, uh, represent uh, the, um, the technology of uh, cutting right <laughs> and uh, yeah this this is a layer layer one uh, scalability approach and uh, uh, it could be combined with layer two scalability approaches like uh, optimistic roll-up for example and uh, multiplies the effect of, of uh, uh, these scalability solutions and uh, providing even uh, broader throughput uh, in terms of uh, number of transactions per, per to watch the full episode click the first link in the description if you want others to discover this content please click like and if you want more content like this consider subscribing also chat with us in our telegram group which will be the second link in the description see you there